we're faced with urgent questions about how we define life, what is natural, and what we want our future to look like. There are so many possibilities on the horizon, from reversing aging to growing food products in laboratories instead of in fields, invent new processes for making fuels or medicines. There's the potential to grow human babies outside of human bodies. We are redesigning life. These are profound shifts, and there are opportunities and dangers. And so we have a moment to reflect on them, to really develop the discourse, to figure out what these things mean for humanity. Um, and we're, I think, wise to take that opportunity. Designers and artists have a particular gift in making clear that these are the questions that we're facing and to put them out into the world in a way that you know, people feel equipped to engage with them or debate. What's important now is that we have platforms to figure out the way forward. The Bio Art and Design Award, or BAD Award, that started in 2010 has evolved into such a platform. It is an annual international competition giving young creatives the opportunity to collaborate closely with leading Dutch life science researchers. Together, they push the boundaries of art and science. Each year, three winning teams get to realize their projects and then launch them together in an exhibition at the Mu Hybrid Art House in Eindhoven. Bio art and design brings in these essential questions that I really felt were important to dive in deeper and to also um, create a returning event uh, at MU to show the developments in this field. This year's exhibition, we gave the title Evolutionaries because life sciences is all about evolution, biology is about evolution, but it's also revolutionizing. There are multiple revolutions going on in the labs and also in how bio artists and designers are using all the discoveries and all the new materials that come out of these labs and question them. So that's uh, a good reason to name the exhibition Evolutionaries. For me, the BAD Award is, is one of the most prestigious and important uh, awards we have worldwide. When I won it, it was a, a huge jumping uh, stage for me because it gave me access to these scientists, it gave me access to the materials and tools, it gave me access to this network and it creates new ways of, of looking at the world about all these questions we are dealing with. And so it, it's very important to, to ask these questions because we have to change the world and we have to change it into a more beautiful, sustainable way where we live in symbiosis between technology, nature and humankind. It's democratization of science probably and what is happening in the labs. The artists ask different questions than scientists do and they start experimenting and that says something about how we speculate about our lives, lives in the future, um, our relation to technology, our relation to the earth. All these questions are really profound and almost philosophical. If we think back to the year 2000, we lacked uh, a really meaningful discourse about the rise of digital technologies and the internet and it's created all kinds of unintended consequences. Unfortunately, a lot of those discussions didn't really happen, and we want to avoid that with the rise of biotechnologies. We want to make sure that in the year 2040, we're at a place where and we've achieved greater social and environmental justice, that we don't just exacerbate the kinds of problems that we have now. Over the years, we have had um, many different aspects of what bio art and design can touch upon. Food, fungi and molds, and how to use this, this microbiological world. 
Gender issues are recurring. Sound, the sound below sea level. Uh, we know more about the moon than we know about what's happening in the oceans. All these kinds of subject matters that artists and, and designers are interested in um, come back in different forms. I think the award creates value for the artist in the sense that they can get a jump start in their career, they have a, a time and space to develop their practice and find out what it's like to collaborate with someone that's in a field completely different from their own. It was my first time when I collaborated uh, with a scientist and in fact it was the first time when I worked in, uh, in the lab and I was I was fascinated and it's, it was really fantastic because they open everything, all the machines, all the equipment to someone, to an artist who actually has no clue how to use it, how to do it. You always think like, okay, should I invest my time in working with an artist? And often I thought, why am I doing this? Because there are so many other things to do and why? And then uh, after one week, I saw the results and thought, okay, it's indeed worth investing. Han does an amazing thing because he not only provides the lab to the artist uh, during the process, but also uh, opens the doors of the lab to work further and to do different experiments. Because I had so many other ideas that needs a further experimentation and uh, it's still possible to do it in the lab. And the lab is such a big platform for an artist to, to make it happen. There's value created for the scientist in a number of ways. They can let go of this question of what is it for, which of course is, is always forefronted in scientific research. You have to be very focused and precise, but with art, of course, and with, sometimes with design, it's much more free form. So in a way, the scientist is permitted to draw outside the lines, to think creatively, and to consider what are some possible new applications of their research and also have meaningful experiences in communicating what they do in their lab to a broader audience. Science is asking huge existential questions. As artists, we can also ask those questions and recontextualize science to reveal its kind of emotional meaning. I am a better scientist because Charlotte is in my life. I think these type of collaborations uh, are very valuable for the scientific community, simply because you start seeing your work from a dis different perspective or you put it in a different context. You really feel like a community, more having a community effect and working for something larger than just a scientific question. It's, it's really a lot of fun, that's for sure. Now it's 10 years of the BAD Award and I've been involved in two of the projects and it really has made a big impact on me as a scientist and really has encouraged me to keep going down this route. I think it's a unique opportunity for both artists and scientists who are very curious about each other's ways of researching and ways of knowing, who have common interests and who also want to investigate things, who are curious about things who bring to the project a different perspective that can be very enriching. So I really hope that um, many more artists and scientists in the future can experience what we as a team have experienced. Scientists are so excellent at finding facts, but then the translation of those facts is often very hard. It's published in a writing and gets maybe mentioned in a news article. As artists, we also collect data, but the two outlets are completely different. Art speaks to the heart, and to me that is very important because then you can build a relationship with the data, and then you start to care about it. And um, once you care about something, then you value it so much that you want to protect it. And that is important for you and me, but it's also very important in policy making. This award also creates value at the level of society in how the works of art and design tend to give us tools to help work out our responses to really fundamental questions about the direction of biotechnology and what are the implications of the advance of the life sciences and how it affects our everyday lives. 
The Bio Art and Design Award uh, has three layers, I think, in that are very important. Uh, first, of course, is the collaboration between scientists and artists and designers. Uh, that's more like the social, cultural aspect to it. Then the second one is the material side. The ideas and the research needs to uh, materialize in an installation or an object or anything that you can really see or touch or smell. And then the third layer is the more discursive one, the ethical side, the discussions, the questions these works raise, the connections they lay with the real world, but also with how we think about life and ourselves and the world and what that means for the future. This leads us to re-examine what we think of as our identity, how we understand ourselves. Very difficult, but very important. The debate is important both for science, to disseminate what their findings are, but also to make these new uh, discoveries or innovations come alive and bring them to the world, but also for a general audience for you and me to understand uh, who we are and what, what is happening now because so much uh, is possible already. We are changing life at its core, I think. We all should be aware of that. Bio art and design or the exhibitions that we do um, can help in that. Artists and designers are capable of bringing this ethical side and this debate that needs to be had very clearly um, uh, to a wider audience.